Well, a warm welcome to this evening's talk, Wednesday the 22nd of June. Now, the United States and the United Kingdom, and indeed Europe, and in fact the rest of the world as far as we know, are in a BA4, BA5 Omicron uh, bounce. So the proportion of BA, uh, BA4 and 5 Omicron in the UK at the moment is probably well over 60 70 percent that kind of range and probably similar in the states because the statistics are always a bit behind now the interesting thing is south africa and portugal are just coming out of their ba4 ba5 wave so if we have a look at those we can see what's probably going to happen to the rest of us now these are daily confirmed cases now portugal we see is high now this is largely a product of reasonably good testing in Port uh, portugal United States, again, lower, United Kingdom, lower because of the low testing, although there has been a slight uptick, which is real in the United Kingdom. And South Africa basically aren't doing too much in the way of testing, so we can't really tell too much from that. But more importantly, we look at the patients in hospital. Now, South Africa, th these are genuine numbers from South Africa. Uh, there is good hospitalisation data from there and we've followed this on several times directly from the website so we know this is accurate so we've seen a slight increase in hospitalizations in South Africa followed by a dip despite the fact that it's South African winter at the moment of course because they're in the southern hemisphere so there's South Africa there the United Kingdom uh, United States United Kingdom so um, hospitalization slightly up in the uh, United Kingdom United States slightly up as well as we'll see but Portugal they have been reasonably high now we in context this is much lower than they have been of course but we still see uh, we have seen an increase in hospitalizations in Portugal they've just peaked now they're on the way back down again therefore I'm afraid we can expect to see an increase in hospitalizations in the United States and the United Kingdom at least to some degree hopefully not as pronounced a blip as we've seen in Portugal but um, it's very, very likely to be there because the Portuguese had a similar immunological background uh, to the United States and the United Kingdom prior to their BA4, BA5 bounce. And when we look at the, uh, the newly confirmed COVID-19 deaths per million, again, South Africa, um, this data again in South Africa is fairly well collected. So this is accurate. They've had a small increase in deaths, but not much. United Kingdom, United States... Uh, but Portugal, there has definitely been some uh, increase in deaths during this um, BA4, BA5 wave. Uh, now, this has primarily been in older people, um, particularly older, particularly over the age of 80, particularly those with comorbidities. But it is it, it is real, unfortunately. So despite it being the middle of summer, literally bang in the middle of summer, it was the solstice yesterday. I'm afraid we're still seeing this uh, problem. So um, we know that BA4 or 5 has got a growth advantage and it's good at invading the immune system. Now, whether it's a better spreader than uh, BA2, we don't know, or whether it's probably just good at evading the immune system, therefore it's reinfecting, is probably the more likely. Now, Office of National Statistics, uh, we, know, we know that cases are high in, in the UK at the moment. Uh, uh, but the point is... Um, while it's around about the 2% mark, this is collectively uh, plus 43% on last week. So 43% higher than last week. So quite a significant increase on the week. And we will see uh, tomorrow's figures be even higher, I am sure. Um, risk of reinfection seven times higher with Omicron during the Omicron period compared to the Delta period. Now, I'm not going to dwell on the ONS uh, figures because we're getting some new ones out shortly. But let's just have a quick look at a, a few. England, we see cases are increasing. Um, and as I say, that will carry on increasing. And that's cases. Now, actually, th th this says when this says cases for the Office for National Statistics, it's actually uh, this is actually done by survey. So this is cases from the survey. So we know that this is genuine data. It's not skewed by lack of uh, lack of people reporting testing scotland likewise uh, an increase and again we'll see that increasing shortly now this is the hospitalization so we are seeing some increase the light blue line of course is the intensive care which has always been low so uh, ba1 spike so characteristic isn't it 
BA2 spike and now the BA4-5 increase. Oh, I don't think we can call it a spike as of, as of yet. Um, this is uh, COVID-19 deaths, which reached a low on the 3rd of June at uh, 211 number of deaths registered by the week. And now we do see a slight increase, very slight increase. If that's enough to be a trend yet, of course, it's too early to say. But we do see that slight, uh, that slight increase. Now, the British Medical Journal has been commenting on this, so it's always worth looking at what they are saying. A British Medical Journal COVID-19 Omicron subvariants driving new wave of infection. No question this is true. Uh, we've been saying this for some time, but it's always good to get the, uh, if the British Medical Journal agrees with, with what we think, always, always reassuring. Um, start of a new wave of COVID infections, BA4 and BA5. Start, well, I, I would guess we're probably about 70 to 75 percent now BA4 or 5. Now that's not in the official figures yet but I would say we're well into it. Um, COVID infections up 43 percent on the week as we said largely due to the immune escape from BA4 or 5. Right Kit Yates independent sage it's pretty much official from the latest ONS stages that the UK has entered the next COVID wave I would agree. Um, it's more concerning to see that there has been an increase in COVID infections in the older age groups. Well, yes, there is. There's infections in all age groups, but, but of course it's the, um, it's the older age groups that are more at risk. Hospitalizations up 31% on the week. So again, even, it's not a, even though it's not on that large numbers, it's still up uh, on the week. 5,000 beds occupied at the moment. It was down on the 1st of June to 3,008. Hundred, so we have dropped off nicely, and unfortunately we're picking up again now. And this is exactly what we don't need in the health service because we need time to take up all the consequences of the um, lost time and the, the large waiting list that we have at the moment. So this is not good for the health service. Uh, Deepak uh, Gatras, good, 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 Drasani. <laughs> sorry, so uh, William Harvey Research Institute. This is our second wave in six months, so so okay. We could argue it's the third BA1, BA2, BA, uh, BA4, 5. Uh, infections have remained high even between waves. It hasn't gone away, and it's hard to predict how big this wave will be. But Steve Powers, um, NHS England Medical Director, expects uh, fewer admissions than the previous two 2020 surges, but we're likely to see some increase. So from this, it looks like um, the NHS is not expecting the surge to be as big as Portugal, thankfully, but it will be there to some extent. As we said, learning from South Africa, uh, BA4-5 waves now pass with fewer hospital admissions and deaths than BA1 or BA2 wave in December. So they've done pretty well, as we saw. Portugal, uh, BA5 is now dominant, but their waves just peaked. But we did see quite a lot of hospitalizations, unfortunately, in Portugal. So um, uh, may, 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 maybe maybe Steve Powers is being a little bit optimistic, but he is well informed. Going by Portugal, it could be a bit higher than he thinks. Um, it's not going to be terrible, but it's not what we want at all. Now, going on to the United States, um, just some interesting data from the States, first of all. Uh, now, this is CDC data. And it's showing the average daily cases and it likes to show the difference between those that are vaccinated and those that are unvaccinated. Um, I'll leave that to uh, for you to think about. It's saying that this actually seems to be saying that vaccination is protecting against reinfection, which I'm not too sure that that is uh, lar as largely substantiated by recent data, I think we could say. But we do know that the vaccination has been very protective against deaths. It's currently five times as high in the unvaccinated as in the uh, uh, it's currently five times as high in the unvaccinated as in the vaccinated. So pretty good reason there to get vaccinated, or at least in the past that's been true. How true this is going to be in Omicron, we don't know because, of course, this is past uh, data. Um, Personally, people keep asking me this. It's 
it doesn't really matter because you don't do what I do anyway or what I say. I just give you the data. But I've had three doses of vaccine. I, I had uh, two Pfizer's and then a Moderna. Didn't choose it, just the way it, just the way it basic took what I was given. I've been asked for a fourth dose, asked back for a fourth dose. And um, so far, I have not taken that up. And because Omicron is so prevalent at the moment, probably personally, I won't be taking that up. But you have to make your own decisions, of course. But... Um, there's so much uh, Omicron around now. I'm expecting. I've never actually tested positive or not not properly. I've, I've had a delayed positive test, but but um, I suspect I have had Omicron. So I'm expecting to have a degree of protection against severe illness and death from that. Anyway, that's just me um, going on to uh, test positivity rate. Now, this is particularly interesting for the United States. We know that testing in the States is poor. We know that it's not being um, accurately reported, but the proportion of tests that are positive is important. Uh, and here we see it now. So this was the original Omicron. And this is, I believe, representing a significant increase due to BA4, BA5 Omicron because it's the positivity rate. So we do see it going up sharply. And from this, I am pretty sure from this that we can say that cases in the United infections in the United States are going up um, so this is um, hospitalizations again we see most hospitalizations of course as we would expect in the uh, older in the older uh, age group over 70 trend over the past um, this is the past 90 days we definitely see an increase in hospitalizations more marked of course in the over 70s as we would expect but uh, but dramatically more marked in the over 70s i think it's fair to say uh, covid patients in hospital in intensive care now in the states there has been in the this is this is the omicron wave here so in the united states Intensive care admissions went up quite dramatically, whereas in the United Kingdom, they went down with Omicron. And I can only assume this is due to the amount of comorbidities and untreated pathologies in the United States, which is a problem. We think of things like poorly managed hypertension, poorly managed diabetes, uh, poorly managed renal compromise, poorly managed chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Not that our health service is that brilliant in the United Kingdom. It's not, but there are... Um, disparities in parts of the American healthcare system, as many of you have informed me, of course. Now, this screen here is um, COVID patients in hospital and uh, ICU in the States again, and that just puts the numbers on it um, so we can see um, the relative numbers there. 11% of hospitalised patients in intensive care, much higher than in the United Kingdom. And that was that graph without the figure on it. And then finally, from the American data, the average uh, daily deaths uh, now standing at um, um, now standing at daily average 311. So, yeah, it, it's it's down it's down dramatically on what it was. Um, I mean, that's the thousand line there. So we're around 311 there, but it has been very high and as we know sadly well over a million americans have uh succumbed during this pandemic so just just a brief very brief glance through the american data here um past two weeks cases are down but that's under reporting as we said the infections are almost certainly dramatically up as we saw from the positivity data which to me was the most Perhaps the most useful, the most useful one to look at. Um, deaths down eleven percent. Hospitalizations up a little bit. Um, so, again, this is just talking in broad figures. A hundred thousand cases announced each day in the states, flattish for the month of June, but underreported. At Southwest cases, hospitalizations increasing. Arkansas, Kentucky, Wyoming, particularly increasing. Uh, we have seen the increase in, in New York as well, um, again, BA4, BA5 driven, which now does seem to be going down slightly. Actually, I just looked at some New York data recently. Uh, more than 30,000 people hospitalized up a little on the month for the states as a whole. Uh, fewer than 350 deaths being reported daily, but still a lot. But it was 2,600 at the 
height of the pandemic. So, so there we go. Um, I'm convinced from that data, especially the positivity data, that BA, BA uh, four and five are currently, I would believe, at least as high in the United States as they are in the United Kingdom. Now, we'll just finish with a few thoughts from uh, POTUS. Uh, Mr. Biden has been speaking. He's met 17 families and their children who received the vaccine aged under five in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, Mr. Biden says this is a monumental step forward in the nation's pandemic response. I think we can assume that Mr. Biden is being well advised by uh, Dr. Fauci, uh, the FDA and the CDC. Uh, no reason to suspect he's not well advised by those people. Um this is no time for politics, Mr. Biden says, which well, I think well, that's a universal statement, isn't it? It's a bit like saying uh, th th this also shall pass away. It's always true. Whatever situation you're in, if you say and this also will pass away, it's always true. Uh, that's one of these statements that's always true. This is no time for politics. <laughs> always true. Anyway, he said it. Uh, it's about parents being able to do everything they can to keep their children safe. Finally, some peace of mind. And I am delighted that the President of the United States has a uh, peace of mind uh, were that uh, I did. Now, uh, I'm going to finish off with a brief report now from um, Wafafa in Uganda. You might have been following the, the progress of Benny. And Ben's got an uh, infection in his femur, remarkably hard to treat, um, osteomyelitis in the femur. So let's just have a look at a, a report from Wafafa now. It's only very brief, so stick around. And, uh, interesting as always. Baby, baby, government is Uh, so guys we finished the uh, addressing Benny's wounds and uh, we are going now to give him more medication that he'll be taking uh, we are hoping to see a very huge difference in his life and uh, we are going to maximize as well on the diet uh, so thank you very much for watching thank you for all the support um here i think uh ben will have to say bye to you <laughs> uh -huh. then of course the friends here when we bye <laughs> how about the caretaker here bye 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 uh, so guys thank you very much for all the support we love you so much uh see you in the next video bye <laughs> well the problem with ben there is that he actually broke his femur a couple of years ago and it got it it was an open fracture and there's contamination bacterial contamination in the bone and and that's caused uh, uh bacterial contamination in the medullary cavity of the bone a condition called osteomyelitis now we can give antibiotics for this but the really annoying thing is and this is intensely annoying antibiotics don't diffuse into bone so but we're going to give him a new regime of antibiotics anyway because it will help a bit and Wafafa is going to carry on doing the dressings which is good for general hygiene although it doesn't really get into the bone itself so we're also working on his diet to optimize his immune system and um, get his immune system working as well as possible so he can hopefully fight this infection in his bone and uh, Wafafa was a, uh, Wafafa worked out that Benny was a bit short of protein, so he's, uh, Wafafa has paid a local guy with chickens to uh, deliver eggs to uh, to Benny uh, on a regular basis. So that should 
that should really help. But the other thing that we talked about, we were talking about this, and we wondered if if, if Benny had enough iodine, because um, Benny actually lives a long way from the sea. He doesn't get sea fish. He doesn't get seaweed. So he doesn't really have a source of iodine in his diet. So we've decided that we're going to give him some extra iodine. So we've got a, we're giving him some diluted Lugo's iodine. And the plan is to give him about three milligrams of iodine a day uh, for the next uh, two or three months. Now, if you're a microbiologist and you've got a view on this, do let us know. But the idea is we're going to give him this iodine and that's going to fill up the, um, the, the, the thyroid gland, the, the thyroglobulin where the iodine stored. And once that's filled up, then the extra iodine, some of it will go into the blood. Now, we believe that this is true because when you give someone a lot of iodine and the iodine replete, it's simply excreted in the urine. And of course, the only way it's going to get from the gut to the kidneys is in the, is in the blood. So there must be an increase in iodine in the blood. At least that, 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 that's our reasoning. Now, there's an increase in iodine in the blood. That means there's going to be an increased iodine supply to the femur via the blood supply because the, the femur has a very good blood supply. And iodine will kill everything, or viruses, or bacteria. I iodine will kill the lot. So if we can get enough iodine to his femur, that could actually get rid of the infection from the femur. And once the infection's gone, the bone will, will heal on its own. So that's the idea. So the combination of the nutrition, the dressings, the improved diet, and we're hoping the iodine is going to help. And that, that they, that's really all we can think of to do for now, um, short of pretty radical surgery, which um, we are reluctant to do and uh, would be difficult to facilitate uh, anyway. So there you go. It's bye from all those kids and it's uh, bye from me.